I'm going to talk uh, today about the customer intent agents. So I'm going to go ahead and first introduce myself. If you guys have not heard of me, my name is Dion Taylor. I'm a director here in pre-sales uh, at RSM. I'm also a LinkedIn learning instructor and a six-time Microsoft MVP now. So I write a lot about Dynamics 365, CRM, sales, customer service, field service, all those types of things. So definitely check out my website or my YouTube channel. And if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I am an open networker. I think they call it a lion, LinkedIn open networker, right? So feel free to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn as well. All righty. So let's dive right in, right? So in 2025, release wave one, Microsoft introduced three autonomous agents for Dynamics 365 customer service and contact center. So we have the case management agents, the customer intent agent, and the knowledge management agent. Now, if you want to know about more about any of these agents, I actually written articles about it, how to set it up. Uh, so definitely check out my blog, d365goddess.com, or you can also review the videos on my YouTube channel as well if you want some more details about those other agents uh, as well. Now, think of these agents as smart AI-powered helpers, right? Right built inside of Dynamics 365 contact center and customer service. So they're really designed to make customer service smoother and more effective by taking advantage of generative AI to better understand what customers need, pull the right knowledge in real time, create knowledge, and support both self-service experiences and assisted service with human agents as well, right? So a lot of stuff there. Now, again, in this session, I'm going to focus on the customer intent agent, right? So let's talk about that. I I was so impressed with this thing. I really think that this agent is definitely going to change the way that customer intent is identified in these customer service interactions, right? So let's talk about what is what does it do and how does it work, right? What's under the covers? Now, this agent is all about understanding what customers actually need when they contact customer service. And it does this by using AI to build and manage something that's called an intent library inside of Dynamics 365, right? So basically it analyzes past interactions. Oops, I'm going too fast. Oh, let me just go back. I'm going too fast. So it's going to analyze uh, these interactions that have been taken place before, right? And that's really, let me just go ahead and go to the next one. No, oh, I'm still going too fast. Sorry, guys. That's really weird. I thought I timed this right. So it's really looking at that historical data, right? And then, so things like emails, chat transcripts, case notes, right? All those types of thing, things. And then it groups those similar issues together into something that's called an intent group. Right. And I'm going to explain that further. So let's take an example here. Uh, we're going to have several conversations in the system about issues like uh, a blue screen error. Right. You can see this guy over here. How do I fix a blue screen error on my laptop? You also see an issue <laughs> regarding a laptop not charging correctly and not being able to connect to an external monitor on a laptop. Right. So people could really engage uh, your customer service department relate related regarding these typical types of issues, right? So when the customer intent agent looks through these historical conversations, it can then group all of these issues under something that's called an intent group, right? And we can call that for this purpose, laptop issues. It can then service individual intents under that intent group for each individual issue or problem. So here we can see our intent group is laptop issues. And below that, we can have a blue screen error, laptop not charging, unable to connect to monitors. And those are called intents, right? Okay, stay with me here. So then, Again, looking at that historical data, those historical chats, the intent agents can then create something that's called attributes. 
And those attributes are going to be related to each intent. And I'm going to explain shortly what these actually do. Now, in this example, you can see attributes that are stored on their disk laptop, not charging intent, right? So we can have cable tested. We can have an attribute that says laptop temperature, and we can have an attribute that says battery drivers. Again, all of this is sourced based on that historical data by the intent agent, right? Now, these attributes are then used to automatically generate relevant questions that a customer service rep can ask when he or she is discussing an issue with a customer. Now, in this example, you can see that questions to troubleshoot the issue of a laptop not charging could be, right, you can see here the cable tested attributes that can then automatically generate the question, hey, did you check your cables? Or the laptop temperature attributes can, can create the question, is the laptop overheating? Battery drivers, can you update the drivers or did you update the drivers, right? So that's basically how all of that works. Now, once a new conversation then starts and is assigned to a live customer service rep, the customer intent agent then maps the issue that is discussed in the chat to the correct intent from that intent library. So why is this so awesome? Because I think it's awesome. Well, first of all, it's going to help customer service reps quickly understand, right, what the customer actually needs. But even better, the agent guides the customer service rep through the conversation by suggesting the best questions to ask, right, based on those attributes. We saw that in a previous slide. So when the agent detects an issue, it populates a suggested question right in the chat, and the rep can then review it, edit it, send it to the customer with one click. No more typing out every single question manually. So faster, smarter customer interactions and way less guesswork for those customer service reps, right? All right, so now let me show you what that looks like. So what I've done here is this is actually a website where you can very quickly just grab the script from your customer service instance, right? If you have a particular, let me just move this to the side. If you have a chat widget set up, uh, this is a great way to kind of test this. You just copy and paste this in here and then you can test your chat. So let's go ahead and test that. I'm not going to put an email address in here. I'm going to go ahead and submit this and I'm going to move this over to the side. Oops, let me just go ahead and go back here. I'm going to move this over to the side so you guys don't have to see me. You don't have to watch me type this in all the time, right? We're going to really go into the experience of that customer service rep. So here you can see, right, my chat request is coming in. I can go ahead and accept that chat request. And then let's go ahead and see what's going on. So the customer says, hello, my name, my name is Jacob Smith, and I'm having an issue with my laptop. It is not charging at all. So what we see here now is that the customer intent agent, you saw that earlier, right? It said, I'm looking for what the intent is. So it found the intent. And as you can see, now we have the questions here. So what I can do from now is I can actually go ahead and I can, I can say something, obviously I can type something in myself, but I can also say, hey, send this question to that conversation. So I'm going to say, have you checked the power cable and adapter that they're securely connected to both the laptop and the power outlet? I can make changes to it, but if this looks good, I'm just going to go ahead and send that over. And then Jacob is going to give me a response. Let's see what he says. He says, yes, I checked the connections. They are connected correctly. Okay, that's great. Look at that, right? Customer has checked and confirmed. So it's also keeping track of the responses of that customer. And now it's giving me that second question. Look at that. It's already in there. I don't even have to click on this little send to conversation button. I can actually put my mouse in here and then hit tab. And that also populates that question directly in here. All right. Let me see if it has, uh, if Jacob did those things. If Is your laptop really hot or anything like that? Let's see what he says oh, the laptop doesn't feel really hot or anything like that, right? Then the next question, do you, you know, please let me know if you have checked or updated the battery drivers on your laptop. And again, I can just go ahead and, and sit, hit that tab button, which will then, right, move it here into my chat and I can now 
again, send that message over. Now, at any particular point in time, I can request a solution as well. So when I do that, it's really going to look through my knowledge articles and whatever other knowledge that I have in here. And as you can see here, this is actually coming from a knowledge article, right? So it's giving me some additional information as well directly in here. So, and that's how we can use the customer intent agent to very quickly help us, right, resolve these types of issues. Now, there is another scenario that we have as well, because this is really just talking, your customer is really conversing with a live agent, right? What if we wanted to extend this functionality within Copilot Studio? Can we do that? Yes, we can. You can set it up so that the the agent that you create in Copilot Studio will actually first do the same thing, right? Look at those intent-based suggestions and start asking those questions. So let's take a look at that as well. I'm just going to go ahead and end this conversation here. Let's just go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and now I have another chat and this is as you can see a different chat widget so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to move this over here to the side so you guys don't have to oh no actually we will have to deal with this because again this is now the agent right there is no human in the loop this time so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing uh, again I can enter my email address or I can do that or I can just not do that at all it doesn't really matter let's put it in here Let's just do that. And now this particular chat channel is now connected to a bot, right? To that co-pilot, to that agent that I have created in Copilot Studio. So let's go ahead and see how this now works. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, right, it's tell it, telling me who it is. I'm Canada Agent Virtual Assistant, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say, hey, my laptop is not charging. And since I exposed this intent in this particular with this agent as well we should now get a similar experience <clears throat> where instead of the live agent asking those questions based right from that intent and from those attributes the agent should now do that and look at that have you already checked all the connections and tried plugging in your charger into a different a different socket I'm going to go ahead and Jacob is going to say, yes, I checked all the connections. They are connected correctly. I also tried a different socket and that didn't work. Didn't work. There we go. Let's just go ahead and send that and see if it now generates the next question for that agent. And here it comes. Does your laptop show the battery is plugged in or not plugged in? It shows as plugged in. Now, again, this is coming from that intent agent. I have not created anything in my agent related to topics or knowledge or anything, right? It's just doing that by itself, right? Same thing. All right, now we have two minutes less left. Let's now take a look at the setup for that, right? So if you go to the customer, to the Copilot Service Admin Center, you're going to see uh, an area here that says intent. So if you click on that, Right, you can see this is the customer intent agent setup, which is currently in preview. Now, again, I did an article and a video on this where I'm walking you through all of those things step by step. But basically, what I've done first is you first are going to manage your intent discovery setup. This is what I was saying earlier, right? It's going to look at historical data from cases and conversations. This is how you can you can actually pick what you want it to do. You can see here execution failed but it actually did run so once it does that then after it then goes through that historical data then it's going to uh, set up these intent groups right here you can see all the intent groups that I have here you can see the battery laptop battery charging issue it will have intent groups related to that. Here's my resolve battery charging issue for laptop. And as you can see, it has the 14 attributes below that, which will generate the questions that you just saw happening. And then lastly, you can see here as well, it also is allowing me to associate knowledge articles related to this specific intent. And since I've done the video, now we also have the option to add 
intent instructions for each individual intent as well. So thank you guys so much for joining. Hopefully that was that was helpful.